Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to review the new Prosper Card MasterCard, a credit card that is targeting bad credit customers as well as new to credit customers, including the possibility of having a soft inquiry on your credit card application that won't hurt your credit score. Before we talk further, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already, and if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So if you're not familiar with Prosper, it started and still is a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. People come in on one side looking for loans. People come in on the other other side looking to invest in loans. So peer to peer, peer over here being funded by a peer over here. Now the Prosper Marketplace has expanded. There are a lot more financial products on there and this Prosper Card MasterCard is the latest of those. So it is by and large targeting people that have a bad credit history, that have had some credit problems. They say it is also for people that are establishing credit, but when you look at the details, I would say if you are new to credit, this is not a card that I would probably start with. However, if you've had some credit problems in the past, you might find this one interesting and in particular if you really are uh, you know sensitive to how many hard inquiries you are getting on new credit accounts the fact that they are promising a soft inquiry on your application is something that it might appeal to you there's a little murkiness in the details on that soft inquiry and we'll talk about that as we go along but let's look at the details overall all right, so let's start with the basics. The Prosper Card, as I've said, is a MasterCard. It has a $39 annual fee, but that is waived for the first year. So no annual fee first year, as long as you sign up for auto pay, meaning you are allowing Prosper to pull your credit card payments straight out of your bank account. In terms of rewards and bonus, none of that kind of stuff. This is a no frills card, like I said, for people with a bad credit history or people that might have no credit, tr credit track record. So you're not getting any of the goodies with this card. In terms of credit limits, could be as low as $500, could be as high as $3,000 when you are approved for the card. They say that they will look at your account for a potential credit limit increase every three months. So if you start out at only $500, but you're making your payments on time over those first few months, potentially that would go higher as quickly as three months after getting the card. Now it appears that $3,000 is the high water mark, so they're not going to ever take you beyond $3,000 from what I can tell, but if you start out at $500, that's a long way to go. If you start out at $3,000 as your credit limit, well, it doesn't look like it's going to get any higher. In terms of the everyday interest rate, could be as low as 23.99%, which is not particularly low, could be as high as 29.99%. So no matter how you slice it, you're not gonna have a great interest rate, so you're not going to want to carry a balance from month to month on this card or any other credit card for that matter, but this one especially because you've got some pretty bad interest rates. Foreign transaction fees, only 1%. So if you use the card outside of the United States, you get a 1% fee on those transactions, which is better than a lot of other cards on the market that oftentimes are going to charge you 3%, but not as good as no foreign transaction fee, obviously. Uh, Prosper is also talking about the fact that they do not have cash advance fees on this card, which to be honest with you, is not really a great selling point because it almost encourages you to take out a cash advance and the downside to the cash advance beyond the fact that you're taking out cash that you don't actually have in your bank account is the fact that you still are going to start getting charged interest immediately when you take out a cash advance and it's going to be at the 29.99% interest rate. So still a bad idea. For other details you might want to know, you can choose your payment date. So if a certain time of month is better for you to make a credit card payment, you can choose that date and it will be the same every month or at least close to the same every month. This card offers the potential for instant approval and the potential to actually use some or all of your credit line immediately. Now you're not going to have the card in your hands, so that means you can use it digitally, meaning you can use it for online purchases or through the Prosper app. Now Prosper itself is not a bank, it's a financial platform platform, but it actually works with banks for its uh, lending that it does. And in this case, for the credit card is Coastal Community Bank, which is a bank that works with a lot of sort of fintech companies out there like X1, the Greenwood banking platform, and there are others as well. All right, now let's talk about that idea of the soft pull or soft inquiry on your credit report when you apply for the Prosper card. In multiple places on their website, they say you can apply without a ding to your credit score. They even say somewhere along the line that if you have a bad credit history, why not give it a shot? Why not apply and see if they would approve you or not because it's not going to hurt your credit score. So as far as I can tell, there is not going to be a hard inquiry at any point on your credit card application. The only time 
your credit score would be impacted in a negative way is if you are actually approved. Now, this is how I think it works. They could be a lot more clear. If you open a new credit account, you're always going to have that show up on your credit report. And in the short term, it's always going to ding your score a little bit. But if you're someone that is looking for credit, you want to be approved. You want that new credit card account. But anyway, what they are doing essentially with this card is they're doing a pre-approval. So when they say we will uh, you know, allow you to apply and there won't be any ding to your credit score, they're doing a pre-approval. They are going to look at your credit history, do the soft pull, and if they know they're not going to give you the card, they'll tell you, no, you're not going to get it, and you won't have any uh, worry about a hard inquiry. But they might also tell you that you are going to be approved and that you are going to have this interest rate and you're going to have this credit limit, but they're still going to tell you right there on that form that this is a pre-approval and that is not guaranteed even at that point. So, as far as I can tell, you're not going to get the hard inquiry if you say, well, yes, I want the card, even if they then look at your credit report and for some other reason they decide, well, we pre-approved you, but now we're not going to give you the card. So it appears that you're not going to get a hard inquiry, but there's nowhere on their website where they are 100% clear that there's no way you're ever going to get a hard inquiry. They are clear that you are going to get the new credit account if you are approved, and that's going to you know hurt your credit a little bit in the short term, but should help it in the long term as long as you make your payments on time. But they're a little not wishy washy on the inquiries. They just don't really talk about it. But my guess or my sense from what they're saying is the fact that you're not going to have an inquiry that is hard and is going to hurt your credit score in any way, even if you are rejected. That's the best I can do. All right, I did not want to belabor that point, but I know everyone wants to know about the soft pull, especially if you have had some credit problems in the past. Now, I went through the pre-approval process myself. My credit score is over 800, so I assumed I would get the best of what they are offering in their terms and conditions, and I got close, but not the very best. They showed me a $2,800 starting credit limit and a 24.49% interest rate. All right, one final thought, and then we will summarize whether this card is any good and who it is any good for. When a new card comes on the market, oftentimes, they are going to put a little grid on their website where they compare their card to a couple competitor cards on some of the key features. And when you see that grid, oftentimes you can see where that card is probably competing in the credit card space. In this instance, with the Prosper card, they are comparing themselves to the Capital One Platinum card and the Merrick Bank Secured card. So you can kind of see where they are playing in that sort of bad credit space, maybe in the establishing credit space. The Capital One Platinum card is a bare bones card. It's unsecured, it has no annual fee, but it's got a high interest rate, it has no rewards. It is pretty much the lowest of the unsecured cards in terms of credit score out there from any of the major credit card issuers. And the Merrick Bank secured card, really they could have used almost any secured card here. As far as I am concerned, you have to put a security deposit down in order to get the card. So they are basically comparing themselves to cards for people that don't have a credit history or don't have a very good credit history, so that tells you something. All right, so should you consider the Prosper card? If you are new to credit, I would say no. This is a card that you probably could do better than out there on the market, even without a credit history. You could potentially go to Capital One and maybe get one of their sort of starter cards, even without a credit history. You could go to Discover, potentially, and maybe be approved for one of theirs. Both of those issuers have pre-approval forms on their websites where you could try to see what you could qualify for, and you would probably qualify for something better than what this card is offering, probably without an annual fee. So you don't need to start at this level. Now, if you go to you know multiple cards, there's the pedal card out there that is sort of uh, serving new to credit customers. You could try that as well. If you go to these places and you can't get approved, maybe you would consider this card as a place that you would go next. But in reality, there are better options for you, usually if you are new to credit. Now, if you have a bad credit history, this card maybe is something that you would look at because it is not great, but it's not bad. And there is a sort of a whole level of bad credit cards out there that are bad, that charge much higher fees than this have even higher interest rates than this card has. And so you don't really want to deal with those cards. This card is sort of a step above that, which is why they're comparing themselves maybe to the Capital One Platinum and to that Merrick Bank secured card. I tend to think of Merrick Bank as being like maybe a little bit better than some of the other bad credit issuers out there. So maybe you would
would look at this card depends. I still probably would look at Capital One first still, maybe look at Discover first, depending on where my credit score was and see if I could get pre-approved there if I was rebuilding my credit. But depending on what your history is with those issuers or your history overall, this is another option out there that potentially could help you build your credit. You'd get a year without having to pay an annual fee if you do the auto pay. And who knows, maybe you'd hold it for a year and that would help you build your credit to a point where you would get approved elsewhere and they could get rid of this card without ever paying that annual fee. So it's not a bad card if you are someone that is rebuilding credit and I could see why some people would find it interesting. And now if you're someone that is rebuilding your credit, the final question might be how low will Prosper card go when it comes to credit scores? The fact that Prosper is comparing themselves to the Capital One Platinum leads me to believe that they are probably looking for people in the sort of same area where the Capital One card would approve you, which means they are not looking for the lowest of the low like some of those fee harvester cards cards out there that are going to charge you an arm and a leg and they're going to have all kinds of crazy extra fees and they're going to give you almost no credit line and they're going to have interest rates over 30 percent. That is not where the Prosper card is playing, which means they are probably not playing with the lowest credit scores out there. So my guess would be if you're over a 600 credit score, you could probably get approved here. If you're between 550 and 600, maybe a little murkier or maybe you would get approved with that very lowest credit limit, but every three months you'd have that possibility of it going up when they looked at your account. Again, under 550, I would think that you are getting into an area that is probably a little less likely that you're going to get approved for this card. And in that case, I would tell you that you probably should go for a secured credit card instead of going for any of those fee harvester cards. Yes, you have to put a security deposit down if you are in that situation, but you can get a card from a major credit card issuer instead of dealing with some of these small companies that are only there trying to get as much of your money as they can. And if you go with one of these larger credit card issuers, you have the possibility of being graduated to an unsecured card over time. And then you have a good credit card with a major credit card company. Now, recently there's been sort of an upgrade to the secured credit card market. Capital One, US Bank, Bank of America all have really good secured cards. And we did a video about that. So you should check that out too.